name is Diana Leaf Christian and I teach sociocracy to intentional communities of all kinds, go villages, co-housing and so on. And um, this is about using feedback loops. And I wanted to share with you a way that I've learned to teach it that seems to work well uh, for groups to remember to do it and then to do it from then on. Now, why I even got here was because I would meet folks in communities who would say, yeah, we use sociocracy. And I'd say, oh, great, let's, let's talk about that. I'd like to know um, more about what you, how you use it. So then I would ask them, how do they use it? And I would find out when I said, well, do you build feedback loops into your proposals? And very often they would look up in the air, quite often up into the corner of the room like this. And they'd be thinking, they go, oh yeah, I kind of remember that. May, I think I remember something about that from the workshop that they had or the training that they had. And then I was realizing that learning about it did not seem to stick. And since I learned from sociocracy trainer Gina Price in Australia, something invaluable about sociocracy, especially for intentional communities, which can be contentious and less so when people use sociocracy. Um, what's invaluable about using feedback loops in proposals is that when you are considering a proposal and someone has an objection, one of the easiest ways to resolve an objection is to at the words in your proposal about how you'll later measure and evaluate it once it's implemented. Uh, so I have developed some uh, exercises, which I'll show you. But before I do, I just want to say more about how this came about. Um, so, so what I observed from Gina, and now I teach this everywhere I go, is that if a person says, objection, uh, OK, thank you. What's your objection after you get back around to them? And they say, because I'm afraid X, Y, Z will happen. Or they state their opinion as fact, which is pretty common. X, Y, Z will happen. And so one thing to do that's so helpful is to say, oh, well, let's just uh, ask here in, um, in our proposal, uh, did X, Y, Z happen? This is one of our evaluation questions. Or does it look like X, Y, Z is starting to happen? And then, you, and then you say to the person with the objection, do you think if we added this here, this would be safe enough to try? I saw Gina do this in a simulation exercise and it was quite revealing. And then this is what happens with me when I do this in simulation exercises too now. And the person said, oh, well, um, uh, I'm not sure. And then Gina said, if we make it even more explicit, is there any indication X, Y, Z might be starting to happen? then do you think if we added that to the proposal when we evaluated that it would be safe enough to try? And the person says, oh, I'm not sure. And this person is actually just acting, right? It's a simulation exercise. But you know how people get when they're doing simulation exercises? They act like it's real. They really get into it. I think everybody's actually a born improvisational actor, you know? And so then, so then Gina said the piece de resistance, she said, uh, if we move the time of measuring and evaluating this, implemented proposal right closer to when we implement it, like two weeks later, do you think, and we said this, do you think it'll be safe enough to try? And the person says, uh, I, don't, I don't know. And then Gina said, if we moved it a week up after we implement it to see if X, Y, Z is happening, do you think it would be safe enough to try? And I'll never forget this person's answer. <laughs> they said, oh, yeah, oh, you, oh, it only needs to be safe enough to try. And it's like finally goes into them, you know, that, 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 we, that all it has to be is safe enough to try and that we are saved by the fact that we have feedback loops in there, which I have found makes it easier for people in a group, especially intentional communities where people can be a wide variety of people, including folks who are pretty risk averse. You know, they don't want to try things because, well, what if a bad thing happens? And so if they're in a group and we're in a circle and they're in our circle, unless they're willing to try it, they might just hold on to their objection a long time, particularly if this group formerly used consensus decision-making and formerly used it for a really long time. It takes a little more time to unlearn and relearn what I think is a whole new paradigm. So that's why I got involved in the whole idea of teaching feedback loops first, and not only teaching them first, but not teaching them in a way that's abstract. What I found is that some people think feedback loops sounds like science and engineering, 
well, no wonder it comes from, I think, um, I think it comes from uh, cybernetics and of uh, the, the plan, the plan, implement, evaluate cycle, which in uh, sociocratic literature is often described as lead, do, measure. I call it plan, implement, evaluate, which I got from the French version of saying that. And I think that says it a little more clearly and easily. So I just took it from the French into English and call it plan, implement, evaluate. So I want to do that screen sharing thing and show you what I do. But first I'll tell you, um, I spend about 15 minutes at the very beginning of a workshop and the workshop will be for the public and a bunch of folks from intentional communities. Either they already live in one or they're about to start one or they'd like to start one or they'd like to join one. Or I'm in a community teaching just to them. This is the two ways that I do this. So I start off with a brief overview of three things sociocracy contains um, a governance system, decision making, and using feedback loops. The basic principles and values, and then what I call the seven parts. Now, as you probably know, there isn't any real seven parts. There's four principles, but I have uh, drawn from John Buck's structure, added to it with his blessing and permission, and with other sociocracy trainers whom I have, uh, uh, whom I have. Um, uh, checked in with to see if it seems fine to do what I do and they said yeah go for it and so uh, so that's why I'm um, using a structure even though in sociocracy actually there's these four principles and not exactly a structure so 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 what I do is I say okay a easy way to learn this is to learn the seven parts so here's how I divide up the seven parts circles and double links plus aims and domains for every circle and for your organization. That's one. Feedback loops, that's two. And then five different meeting processes in each uh, policy meeting. I, you will probably hear these called circle meetings, circle meeting, policy meeting, uh, uh, creating proposals, uh, consent decision making, um, role improvement, I mean, uh, selecting people for roles, which we mostly know as elections, I call it selecting people for roles. What I call role improvement feedback, which we often hear is performance review. I call it role improvement feedback because I'm trying not to scare folks in communities with corporation sounding language. Also, they tend to like that better. And then they tend to do it <laughs> when, when they later learn to do it. They tend to do it because they see that it's not really threatening. And the last one being consenting to circle members. So that's the seven things. As soon as I do that, we do an exercise. This is like 15 minutes into the workshop. And the exercise we do is for me to ask people to look at a piece of paper, which we, everybody gets. That's a simulation exercise. So I would like to share my screen and show it to you. So give me a second to, uh, to do this. Okay. I think I'm sharing my screen. Am I? Do you see this? Could I hear from someone? Would someone unmute their mic and tell me? No, if we don't see, see that. No, we don't yeah. see it, Diana. Yeah. Okay. Here, Jerry, I need your help. Can you hear me, Jerry? Can you see it now? It's coming, yes. Yep, we got it. Yes, yeah, we got it. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, I want to remove this thing. Okay, great. So th this is the top of it. Um, I've made it in giant letters, so I hope you can see it. You don't even have to read it, but I want you to know that at the top of this little paper that everybody has, um, it says it says that this is an exercise. It's about revising the website. If you see the promotion circle domain, I'm pretending this is this promotion circle. I don't know how to, oh, here we go. I'm trying to move things around so that I can move this. So then I put the aims of it, creating and maintaining information about our community with others, communicating with others about these various ways, propose that we revise and update our website, blah, 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 the background, why we want to. And then see, this is the part where people fill in on these blanks ways to measure and evaluate it later. So I get four or five people to come up to the front of the room and sit in chairs next to me. I pretend to be the facilitator. 
I, I say, since we've created this proposal, we pretend we just created that proposal. Now we're going to add in ways we're going to measure and evaluate it regarding that we're going to update our website. So then I call on the first person. These, are, these people have never done any sociocracy at all. They've just arrived in the workshop, and this is 15 minutes after we start. And, I, and they say, gosh, I don't know how to do this. And I say, well, actually, all you do is think of a question we might ask that's evaluative, like, do we like it? Um, is it working? Um, maybe we created a survey of our members and sent it out to everybody on email or made a physical copy and put it in their mailbox or knocked on their door, knock, 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 here's the survey, would you fill it out? So that we can see if people like the new website, our own people. And then somebody will say, oh, oh, I know what we could do. We could put a survey on the website itself saying website browser, please click here to go to our survey. And so we write that down. And then I say something like, so what would you like this survey on the website to do? Well, you know, to measure if they like it. Okay, great, thanks. Um, somebody else will say, we could see how many hits there were because they're getting into it. They're starting to get the idea. So I'll say something like, okay, how many hits do you want to compare previously to when we updated the website, the number of hits to after we updated it? Oh yeah, they say. And then, and then I'll say, so like what period of time would you like to measure previous and after? So we compare similarly, like, they go a month, a month before, a month after. So I say, yeah, okay, people start getting into it. They come up with measurement ways and they come up with, you know, objective things. And then they come up with subjective, personal, do I like it? Do people like it? What do they think ways? So then at the bottom of this exercise, um, I have places for them to fill in in these blanks, the dates of our upcoming meetings, where we will have on the agenda, that we look at any data from any member surveys we did, any online surveys of browsers that we did, and um, our own views, our own opinions that we have, that we share with each other in our meeting, in our policy meeting, circle meeting. And so, so they fill in here dates. Now, none of this is real. There, we don't have a promotions committee. We don't know when we meet. I just say, oh, write some dates in there. Now, what I'm trying to do is get people to use their hands in their minds, in their eyes, and their mouths to use physical things. You know, they're writing, they're thinking, we're writing it all down. Everybody sitting in the room, not the four people up in the front with me, but everybody else has got one of these as well. And so they're looking at it. As soon as we finish this, which takes five minutes, I ask for questions, but I don't take very many, like four. Then I say, okay, now we're going to do another exercise. And I get four more different other people to come up. And when these four more other people come up, they're a little bit more used to how to do it because they've just done it some. And then I say, okay, um, uh, this next one, still the promotions committee, it's let's start an online newsletter. It's the very same thing. It's the same format as this. And then they, they don't, dis I say, please don't discuss a law proposal. There's no discussion. I'm just gonna call on you on rounds to fill in these blanks. Please don't think we have to make the proposal better. We're just only focusing on ways to future measure and evaluate. Okay, now everyone in the room has got the second little paper that has the second simulated exercise on it and the four people up front, they do it faster and with more skill than the first group because they saw it done. Third time we do it, I say, okay, here's a third one. This one is the community building circle here's our domain here's the a circle that we do the area of responsibility and our authority in it here are the aims that we have in this circle the the things we provide to our community the um the verb things creating maintaining whatever and then i can't remember what that um what i think what we do is we look at ways to measure and evaluate the new children's playroom that we're about to create as the community building circle. Anyway, they do the same thing, but they do it in groups of three or four in the room. Why I ask them to do this, and then I ask one of them to play the role of the facilitator, and I remind them, it's just an exercise. Don't try to improve the playroom. Just find ways to measure and evaluate it after we've built it and the children are using it. So people really get into it. And after that, I take the questions. Um, now I want to stop sharing the screen and I'm not quite sure how to do that. I know. Um, stop share. There we go. Okay, great. Um, 
Well, after that, and I think we have three more minutes, so I'll show you what I'm going to show you. Jerry, could you fix it so that my screen is bigger? Because right now I'm seeing a nice big picture of a man in a yellow shirt, and I don't know his name. But oh, hi, hi, hello. <laughs> Are you the are you the person who is running this bin? Can I, you fix it so that my screen is bigger? In the upper or right hand corner. Happening? In the upper right hand corner, try clicking gallery view and then you'll see everybody. That might be better than what you see now. I do see everybody. I'm just trying to make my screen go bigger. You, so you're bigger can, for us. Well, I'll just do with what I want to do anyway. Okay. Yeah. Oh, there's okay. also I will well, just use my it's okay. I have a few minutes and I'm going to show you a thing I do. Only after they've experienced it three times do I try to share anything um, theoretical. So at the top of my little flip chart, I put the word plan, which is in, oh good, you can see it. Thank you for your thumb. <laughs> uh, and then I put this uh, arrow. That's that's blue. I'm trying to try to turn this so you can see it. And this might be backwards on your screen. I hope not. This is supposed to be how you can read. It's okay. Okay, good. Yeah, I say plan. Backwards. I say this is the first. It's not backwards. Good. I say this is the first of the three parts of feedback loop. And I say here are the people in the circle. I draw little circles. I make five of them. I say these circles are pretty small. That what they're doing is they're creating a proposal. And I make a rectangle saying that's like the paper that it comes on. And um, here are the ways we measure and evaluate it. And I put it in red. And then I put dates that we're going to evaluate. I put May, June, November. And I said that's the first part, planning, because we're planning it. Then I put this one on there, evaluate, or wait implement i want to make sure you can see this it's good this flip chart is way bigger than i can get on the screen <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then i put this arrow number two of implement and i say it's the very same people but now they're not in a meeting now they're doing physical things to implement this and then i say if it's clerical things and then I draw somebody sitting, little stick figure, sitting at a computer, doing something on the computer. Then I say if it's a physical thing, and then I draw a stick figure of a person with a shovel doing a physical thing. And I say it's the same people, they're just implementing it. And, that, and people love to see visuals because it's not so theoretical and it's not so abstract. And then I put this last one, evaluate. Can you see that? Good. I put an arrow. A red arrow because evaluate over here was in red. I'm trying to use, you know, color coding to help people's minds go, oh yeah, oh yeah. So then after I do that, I said, this is the third one, and here they are in a meeting. I draw five little circles. I say it's the same people. The reason it's red is because this is that May meeting, the one that was going to be the first meeting at which we do this. And they go, oh yeah. And then I say, maybe there was a survey here of members. What do members think? And maybe we gather the data from the online survey here, if, if that's what it was. And then I say, so here we're considering it, cogitating about it. And then here is the creme de la creme. I say, so at this point, the group has three things they can do. Yeah. Keep it, change it, or throw it out. And I'm always asking them to repeat back to me, like in a sing-song way. And they're all shouting out, keep it, change it, throw it out. I go, what is that again? Louder. Keep it, change it, or throw it out. So then I say, if they decide to change it, letting people know you know you have to fix it so that you can change it unless it's something you can't like fixing the roof in which case you know but if it's a policy for how you guide your work in your circle well okay so then i say okay here we are back with the same folks it's just that it's may now and now we're maybe making a new iteration of the proposal but maybe we're just taking the first one and changing it a little bit and then we're implementing it second time and then we're evaluating it in the next meeting, maybe the June meeting. So then I just go around a couple of times and people love that. And then I say, 
how many times must you do this? And they say, as many times as we want. I said, can you change the number of times? Yes. Can you change what you measure and evaluate? Yes. They love it. So then I say, there's these three mantras in sociocracy as a result of this. It only has to be good enough for now. I got that straight out of the book, We the People. And then I say, it only has to be safe enough to try, which I swiped off of a, of a holacracy uh, seminar that I took online. But now I know a whole lot of people that say that. So anyway, a lot of us got that one. And then here's the one I made up. Okay, let's find out. The idea being, we have a lot more freedom and peace of mind and lower tension and higher ability to take a chance if we know the proposal only has to be good enough for now, not forever. If we know that it only needs to be safe enough to try, and uh, the one that I made up <laughs> is okay, let's find out. We don't know whether that is a good idea. Let's find out. Roll That's it. Thank you. Not for me. As a, uh, uh, the difference. There is no difference between role and so and so. Uh, so Francois, mute yourself. You are also there as you saw. Yeah, able to practice yeah. I hear a question, but I can't understand it. Could someone tell me what to do? I'll I don't know. I don't know if he was asking a question, but I just muted him. Francois, if you're hearing this and you're actually talking to us. Uh, put a question in the chat or unmute yourself now. Okay. Francois said it wasn't him trying to ask a question. If anybody has a question or comment, here we are, just a few minutes more. Well, I'll tell you one other, nobody does, so I'll tell you one thing I do. Allison likes it. I do. <laughs> I do, though. Can I ask a question? Certainly. Yeah. So, um, I, my question is about this um, uh, finding a balance in sociocracy between the governance part and the actions part or the implementation that you're showing on your, and so these meetings of the evaluation, they're happening throughout the implementation, if I understand well, but during the implementation, no. How are you gathering the data? How are they gathering data for the evaluation? I guess is another way to ask. The way I look at it, they do three different things at three different time periods. Their first meeting when they create the proposal and, and or immediately after consent to it, or the meeting in which they consent to a proposal they already made. After they do that, they will implement it. If they are on a work day and it's a physical thing, they'll probably do it all together at the same time. If it's a clerical thing that different ones of them have different things to do, or just one of the people in the circle, they'll probably be at home on their computer at some point in time. Now it's implemented. They may, let's say that it was updating the website. They may, before their next policy meeting, circle meeting before that, do an online uh, website survey that they collect the data from, that they bring to that meeting. Now they've got that data. They might have done a survey of their own community members. They bring that to that next meeting. Now they have that data. At that meeting, they're not implementing it. They already did. At that meeting, it's an agenda item on their agenda for what they're going to do in their policy meeting for their circle or circle meeting, as you may know the term. OK, at that point, they are looking at the data from the member survey, from the online survey, and they're telling each other mm, subjectively what they feel, what they think, what they have observed. This part here works well, this part seems not to. People who really understand websites probably have far more technical and excellent things to say. And since I don't know much about it, I'm talking like a layperson. So the point is that they talk with each other in that meeting. In that meeting is when they decide if they're going to keep it, change it, or throw it out. Throw it out wouldn't make much sense. They would probably just change it if the website update just didn't work so well. They're tweaking it, they're modifying it so that real life can show them how this works. All throughout the rest of the workshop, I keep referring to feedback loops and people keep saying good enough for now, safe enough to try, people love to say that. And, and, and so if they learned it first and they see how important it is, 
then it's not weird or strange. It's the kind of feedback I get in workshops is from people who I do review workshops for communities that have been using it for a while. <laughs> There's this one group in Connecticut and the burning soul who started the community going said after the end of this, she said, oh, I see, it's not hard. It's so simple, you just write words. And then you ask yourselves later, did it work out and how? And they just feel so relieved that you don't have to be an engineer, a scientist, a software designer, a genius, Einstein or Tesla to do this. You can just be a regular old human like me and you. And that's what I think the power is of having these um, visual exercises where you just write in. Once people have written that in, they so get it. Then when we get to consent decision making the next day of the workshop, we are constantly changing the wording in our simulated proposals to, to meet objections, to fulfill the concern the person had by virtue of changing the word about the thing the person's concern might happen in how we measure and evaluate. See how this all fits together? This is why I'm so excited about sociology.